Pro Tools processes audio digitally as zeros and ones. So in this movie, I want to cover the basics of that so that you know which settings are right for the kind of project that you'll be doing. So I want to cover the theory of this now. So when we use these later on, we can just use them and I don't have to stop and explain what it's doing. So a little bit of theory, a little bit of science class here. Let's begin. Our ears can hear from about 20 cycles on the low end to about 22,000 cycles on the high side. So that parameter is measured in frequencies or hertz, like the car company. So in engineering, we say, let's add a little 5K to the hi-hat, which means boosting the 5,000 cycle area for that sound. Or we say, let's roll the bottom off the guitar. So we cut the frequencies under about 100 cycles to get rid of some of the rumble. So we get into that more in EQ and we'll be mixing. And a lot of these terms are very imprecise. We call things boomy and bright and edgy, and they're not scientific terms, but we sort of understand what we mean by them. And the more you're around audio, the more you'll pick up terms like that. So as we develop the science of digitizing audio, along comes a fellow named Nyquist, and he determined that in order for us to get an accurate representation of the sound, we needed to sample at twice the frequency of that sound. So every sound has fundamentals and overtones. So if we want to hear all the frequencies in the sound up to the 22K limit of our ears, we should use a sample rate of twice that 22K, so 44K. So the lowest sample rate in Pro Tools, let me make a new session, and we'll just do a blank. The lowest one in Pro Tools is 44.1K. And that's the standard sample rate for CD audio and most MP3s are 44.1K. So the 0.1 is thanks to something called the Gibbs phenomenon, which I'm not going to go into here. You can Wikipedia it and find out all you need to know. So when we create a new session, we have the option of choosing sample rates and bit depths. Well, it's never quite completely black and white, but this is pretty close. In the world of music, we use mostly 44.1 and its multiples, like 88. And in the world of video and post-production, we use mostly this one, 48, and its multiples, like 96. So there are higher sample rates, and if your hardware gives you the option of using those, you'll have a higher quality recording. Your files will be bigger, and you may not be able to play your files on some systems. This M-Box, for instance, can only handle up to 48K. You can downsample an 88.2K file to 44.1, but as Nyquist proved, once you chop off the higher frequencies, you can't get them back. Okay, so there's a second parameter in here called bit depth, and that lets us perceive dynamic range, the difference between the loud parts and the soft parts. So in Pro Tools 10, we have three options, 16, 24, and 32-bit float. Most people these days, I think, are recording at 24, but some of your older sessions you might encounter might be at 16. So a 24-bit resolution is 50% better than 16-bit resolution, and that gives us a more accurate dynamic range. So Pro Tools 10 lets us do 32-bit float. So the upside is more accurate dynamics and less of a chance of clipping. The downside is bigger files. Bigger files by themselves might not seem like a big problem. Hard drives are pretty cheap. But if you have a session with lots and lots and lots of audio tracks that need to stream in simultaneously, your hard drive might spit. You know, it might not be up to the task. So there's a little warning about this on page 9 of the What's New in 10 PDF that we looked at earlier. So keep in mind that what you set when you're creating a new session is not retroactive. It can't ever be better than its lowest setting. So. If CDs are 44.1 and 16-bit and you can't hear higher than 22K anyway, then why use anything higher? Well, you have a better resolution in the range that you can hear, and the only downside is bigger file sizes. But if you want to keep it simple, use 44.1 for your music projects and 48 for your video projects. Okay, let's get past science. Let's get into the interface and let's see how all this science can let us be creative. So I'll see you in the next chapter.